everyone welcome back to another video uh, in today's video we're going to be going through the machine included from hack the boxes tier 2 starting point so let's go ahead and get started i went ahead and started the instance here and then ran two in-map scans prior to actually starting the video so we're going to go through those scans and i'll show you why i ran two different scans and what was the syntax used for those so over to our terminal here and there are the two scans, I first included and UDP included. Go ahead and cut out that first scan. So here's the first in-map scan I ran. As well as the syntax you can see here, I used TAC SV for versions, TAC SC for scripts, TAC PTAC for all ports, scan all ports, and then TAC O for outputting it to the first included.scan file. So our in-map scan found uh, one open port. Uh, port 80 which is running HTTP which is default for the uh, 80 port and the version running on this uh, service is Apache HTTP 2.4.29 um, nothing there stands out we could do a search point on the on the version number for Apache real quick but we're just gonna stick with these steps for the uh, room and I'll show you why I ended up running two scans here in a moment. So we go over to task one. It says, what service is running on the target machine over UDP? And this is, uh, so as you can see, task one automatically is asking us about UDP. And if, if you notice in that first scan, we didn't include uh, scanning for UDP ports, open uh, UDP ports. And scanning for UDP ports can take some time. It can take a long time, actually. So that's why I went ahead and ran this one prior to starting the video as well. So let's go ahead and cat that out. You see two open ports were found for UDP, port 68 and port 69. Both open, and all we have for these uh, are the services, which one service is called DHCPC. I'm not super sure about that. But then we see TFTP, and from experience, I know that's Trivial File Transfer Protocol. I haven't worked with it too much or played around with it much, so I guess that's something we'll be messing with here soon. Let's go back to our task and see what we need to do. So we know from the UDP scan that that's going to be Trivial File Transfer Protocol. What class of vulnerability is the web page that is hosted on port 80 vulnerable to? Okay, so now it's want us to open up the uh, website hosted on port 80, and that's going to be HTTP, and then our IP address, and we got the landing page for the website, and it doesn't seem, it seems like a static website, automatically I've already noticed up here that there is what looks like a possible file inclusion vulnerability as you can see we have the parameter file here and then equals and it looks like the web page <clears throat> so what the local file inclusion vulnerability is is it it, um, it gives us the ability to read local files on the web server itself so I can see here this home.php file is sitting on the web server and right now it is uh, the, reading it through the, the file parameter file equals parameter so what we can try to do is read other files on the web server as well, just by go, uh, going ahead and typing those in there. So one file that we know is present in all uh, web servers and Linux machines is going to be the Etsy uh, slash password file. So we can go ahead and try to read that. And we don't get anything there because I didn't, I forgot a forward slash there. And boom. We have a local file inclusion vulnerability present on the machine. So we go back to our task and we can go ahead and type that in. Local file inclusion. Correct. Task number three. What is the default system folder that TFTP uses to store files? Default system folder. Well, we can go back to our website back to our where we found the local file inclusion we look around and it looks like that's the the, the home folder that TFTP 
uh, the TFTP user is using. So I believe that's what it's asking for. What is the default system folder that the TFTP uses to store files? So I'm going to paste that in there and that's not what it was looking for. TFTP. Oh, I forgot a forward slash there, I believe. And that's correct. So basically it was asking about the default system home folder for that, which after catting out the Etsy password file, we were able to find out here. Back to our task. What interesting file is located in the web server folder and can be used for lateral movement? So our next step here would be to get command execution on the machine so that we can read files and we can figure out what file we're looking for here. So we know that uh, Trivial File Transfer Protocol is open on the web server. So what we can do is see if we have that installed. And it looks like we do. And to figure out what we, commands we need to use for this, we can go ahead and run the dash dash help, or we can do the man page. TFTP is an IP version 4 trivial file transfer protocol client. And then here's our description. TFTP is a client for the trivial file transfer protocol, which can be used to transfer files to and from remote machines, including some very minimalistic, usually embedded systems. The remote host may be specified on the command line, so we need to specify the remote host, in which case TFTP uses host as the default host for future transfers. So tac r for the port equals the port force the originating port number specified. All right, let's go ahead and try to connect. TFTP, and then I guess we can just hit enter there and then put in our IP address. Let's see if that works. And it seems like we are in the machine. Oops. I'm not sure the commands we need to use, so let me hit help and see what we have to do here. Uh, we have a put, so we can send files, we can receive files, get files, connect to remote TFTP. We are already connected. I believe we are already connected. Let's hit status and see. So we are indeed connected to 10.129.95.185. So if we're able to send files to the machine through TFTP, we may be able to upload upload a shell or reverse shell to the machine that we can curl or uh, navigate to within our web browser to get a reverse shell on the machine. I'm guessing that's the direction that's wanting us to go in here. So the next step we can do is go ahead and look for a file to upload for a reverse shell. And we know that the we know that the website is running PHP just from our home.php file right there. So we know that we know it's running uh, PHP. Another thing you can do if you want to check uh, you know your applications or your software running on a website, something I use quite often, like for bug bounties or just so CTFs and stuff to get some quick information on the services running, is I'll run uh, what web, and then just put in the URL of your website. And what web will run a quick scan, and then look, throw back some information to you. We got Apache here, uh, Apache, and it'll tell, it'll just give you a bunch of quick information on the website. Sometimes it's pretty useful. So that's something you can do is run uh, what web on your websites prior to actually starting like your engagement or your enumeration. So it's something uh, quick that I'll usually do. All right, so let's go ahead and find a reverse shell. Reverse shell PHP. Pen test monkey is always reliable. And we'll grab a PHP reverse shell here. Go ahead and copy this because I know it's not that long. now we're going to create a file 
call it reverse, or actually we'll just keep it simple and call it shell.php. Paste in our reverse shell here. Zoom up to the top where we need to edit some things like our IP address. I'm going to control shift T, go into another terminal window, IF config, grab my current IP address for the tunnel that we're using to connect to hack the box. And I'm going to alt backspace four times and then control shift paste or control shift V and paste that in there for the ports. Fine. I want to keep port 1234. I'm not worried about that. So control X and then Y for yes. Save that to our directory. So now we have our shell.php file there. As you can see, it's in the directory. Boom, we have that. Now what we can do is try connecting back to the web server through TFTP. And then that IP address, let me grab that IP address again. Paste that in there and we're back. So now I guess we just do put shell.php and I didn't get a status or anything there. I'm not sure if it actually worked. Let's see. Connected option. Well, if there was no error code, I assumed that it uploaded the shell to our TFTP directory on uh, on the web server is where that would go because as we saw when we catted out the uh, Etsy password file, the uh, home directory for TFTP is TFTTP, TFTP boot in the var lib uh, directories under the var lib directories. So we can test this out by quitting out of our TFTP and then we can run a quick curl command HTTP. Or actually, I'm just going to do it in my browser right here since we're already here. So we would grab our the directory we know it's, it fell under. Which going to be that TFTP boot directory. Control backspace. And go ahead and paste that in there. And then shell.php is what we called the file. Before we actually hit enter in that, we're going to come over here to our, our terminal and we're going to set up our listener. So we're going to run netcat-lvnp and then remember that port was 1234. So now we're listing on port 1234. We have our shell and our path. So if we hit enter on that, uh, we have a shell. And it looks like we have a shell as www.data. All right. From here, we don't really can't do much with this uh, the current current state of our shell. So what we can do is come over here and search upgrade shell simply upgrade to fully interactive shells scroll down and let's python is usually good you're running on the linux box python bin.sh oh, let's change that to let's change that to python 3 And let's try that and boom we have a sh we have our shell with a fully interactive shell as www data so now we can move on to enumerating the actual machine the web server see what kind of files we have what we can get access to what our current user can do so we can go ahead and cd into the var www html directory this is usually a good place to start uh, enumerating just because this is where you're gonna find a lot of you know misconfigurations or files left behind that maybe they forgot they left or maybe they have some sensitive data inside of these files so what we can do is go ahead and check some of these out and right off the bat something I noticed that seems interesting is gonna be the HT password and HT access to uh, uh, files just because they're hidden as you can see the period dot there means it's a hidden file or a hidden directory. So we can go ahead and cat that out. HT 
HT password. And right off the bat, there we go, we have a username and a password for our lateral movement. So now what we can do is SU or switch user over to Mike. And then his password is Sheffy. Capital S it looks like, capital S. Sheffy, or she, sorry, Sheffield. Sheffield 19. And now we have access to Mike's account. And what we can probably do is go ahead and change directories over to home, Mike, and then ls, and there's our user.txt. So we can cap that out, grab our first flag, and submit that. And we're probably behind a bit on the questions. <laughs> we probably missed a couple we haven't answered yet. So what interesting files locate on the web server folder and can be used for lateral movement? Well, we know we just accessed the HT password file and that was pretty useful to us as it granted us access to Mike's account. What is the group that user Mike is a part of and can be exploited for privilege escalation? So this is gonna be our next phase of the box this is gonna be privilege escalation. So let's see what we can do with Mike's account. So Mike is a part of the LXD group not too sure about LXD, so I'm just gonna do a quick search on it real quick. LXD. LXD is an image-based, is image-based and provides images for a wider number of Linux distributions, flexibility and scalability. Uh, let's get a bit more specific with our search here. LXD, privilege escalation. If there's, so we have hacks tricks or hack tricks. Hack tricks is always useful for exploits, uh, walkthroughs, and privilege escalation. All right, if you belong to uh, the LXD or the LXSC group like we are, you can become root. So it seems pretty interesting for us. Let's go ahead and try to follow along here and see if we can't escalate our privileges to root. Exploiting without internet. Method one, you can install in your machine this distro builder. Follow the instructions on GitHub, then upload to the vulnerable server the files LXD is in root that and rootfs.squashfs. Add the image, create a container, and add the root path. Find the error, execute the container. Method two, build an alpine image and start it using the flag security privilege equals true. Force the container to interact as root with the host file system. With internet, you can follow these instructions. All right, let's go ahead and start with method one. So it says you can install this to your machine, this distro builder. Let's go ahead and navigate to that up here. Alrighty, let's get the code for this and get clone it over to our machine. So we go over to back the box starting series included, and then I'm going to get clone this to my current directory. Distributor follow the instructions on GitHub. Alrighty. So now it says sudo switch user. So I need to become root. And then sudo apt update. Let that run its course. And then it wants us to install Golang or Go, dboot, uh, strap, rsync. So we'll go ahead and run this command once the update finishes. Shouldn't take too long. This is a new. Cali image. Let that run its course and it's finished. So let's go ahead and paste in that command. Let that run. I've already cloned the repo to my current directory. So what we can do now is just cd into distro builder and I think it was make. Yeah, so just type in make. And that's going to build everything for us. 
prepare the creation of Alpine. So we're going to do make directory dash p and the home variable and then container images Alpine. And that's finished. So let's go ahead and create our directory. Completed successfully. Let's go ahead and change over to the directory. And then we're going to wget content lxc so master images alpine create the container sudo into sudo home build alpine wonder if this matters that it's L lxc yeah so it's creating the container root codes I'm guessing it doesn't matter Okay, so we change directories into there, and then we're going to wget this. Got it. And now we're going to create the container. Downloading source, and now we need to upload to the vulnerable server the files lxd tar and rootfs squashfs. Alrighty. So we need to log back into our tri uh, trivial file transfer protocol and then grab the IP address once more. All right, so we're going to put those two files that it said we need to, which is going to be this one. Oops. All right, let's try that again. I'm going to put these two files, go ahead and copy that, complete it successfully, and then also our root fs, copy that, put, but once that's uploaded to the web server, we can go ahead and go back to our reverse shell we have as Mike, and since Mike is a member of the Alex uh, D group, we should be able to run these commands and hopefully get a shell as root. All right, so it's not uploading it through the TFTP server. So what we can also do is just um, spin up a Python HTTP server and then download it from there to uh, from our victim machine. So let's go ahead and start up a Python server on port 8000. And now that that's running, we can come over to our victim machine where we're uh, where we're assigned in this mic and we can wget that file so it's going to be wget http semicolon slash slash our ip address which is ifconfig and then shift control plus plus to make that a bit bigger grab our ip address and then alt one over back to our terminal window where we're here is mic paste that in there and then slash the file name we'll just download both files actually while we're here so we'll get this one first failed connection failed oh I see we forgot to add the port 8000 to our to our address so if we're running on port 8000, we need to go ahead and add that to the IP address as well. And then we can not paste the <laughs> not paste the URL there again. I meant to copy the file. So paste that there. And we got it. And now let's grab that root FS that we were having trouble uploading through TFTP. We're just going to run that again, wget http, uh, the IP address 10.10.14.114, .10 we're running on port 8000, and 
we get our root fs squash fs file. So both of those uploaded and they are in our current directory. Let's follow along with our hack tricks uh, walkthrough here. So they're been uploaded to the web server and now we need to add the images. So we run our commands lxc, run our image, and it looks like it uh, completed successfully, there's no error there. And then we can list out the image to make sure it was added correctly. And there's our image, it added successfully. And it looks like our image was added successfully. So now it says create a container and add root path. I'm gonna copy that command, paste, unknown flag alias. Interesting. I wonder if it's because, so maybe not. Let's read through this a bit better and see. If you find an error in a storage tool found, please create a new storage, run LXT in it, and repeat the previous chunk of command. Maybe let's do this without the... Let's try doing it without the alias and see if it works. Creating privic set. Okay, now let's list the containers and make sure that was done right. State stopped. So it's there, it's in a state of stopped. And now let's try executing the container. So it looks like it was able to start the process and then Execute privesc. Uh, who am I? And there we go. We have we have root. We can go back to our questions that it was asking us what group is the user Mike a part of that will allow us to uh, escalate our privileges. That was LXD. When using an image to exploit a system via containers, we look for a very small distribution. Our favorite for this task is named after mountains. What is the distribution name on FizzyBox? So let me copy that and come over here to Google. Alpine, that's right. Duh. Alpine. What flag do we set the container to the container so that it has root privileges on the host system? And that was going to be, where is it at? That was going to be this one right here. Privesque. That is security privilege equals true. In the root file system, if the root file system is mounted at mount in the container, where can the root flag be found on the container after host system is mounted? And I believe it wants the mount root directory, but like I said, for some reason, we're not seeing any directories or any contents of any directories. I'm not sure why it's being, why it's doing that. Okay, so we have our directories here. All of our directories inside of the root directory, but we can't see anything. CD into mount, ls. Yeah, we're not getting anything back for anything. CD into Etsy, ls. So we can see the contents of Etsy here, or some of them at least. is being weird 
Not sure why. Pretty sure it would be mount and then the root directory would be in there. Because if we put that here, so I'm actually typing root. Maybe not. In the root file system is mounted at the, if the root file system is mounted at mount in the container, where can the root flag be found on the container after the host system is mounted? Uh, I figure it'd be mount, but maybe not. It's a bin. Go ahead and look at the walkthrough and see what the walkthrough says on this. So the walkthrough says the root.txt would be found inside of the mount directory at root at root. That's not the case for us. CD into root, there's nothing there. CD into temp, nothing there. CD into mount, nothing there. We should have went with the other method that was that was over here. And we would have got better results with that. That's probably the method that the walkthrough went to uh, went through. So that's probably the issue. Uh, if you're doing this box, <laughs> run with method two, I guess, and not not method one because it causes an issue with the shell. It looks like the root shell. But nonetheless, it seems it would be in the mount root. Maybe I forgot a forward slash earlier, and I did. So there's that, and then we can grab our user flag. Oops. We can grab our user flag right here. Paste that in there. And like I said, if you're going through this box, make sure you go with method two once you get that tricks. Because method one, it seems, unless I missed a step, is giving us a couple errors with the shell and not being able to read or see certain files and directories. So anyway, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below in the comments and I hope everyone has a great day.